we as brands need to position ourselves as the guide and position our customers as the hero. Mm. So Simba is young. His father passes away. All of a sudden, they want him to be king of the village, right? But Simba lacks the confidence, the security, the, the, the courage to become king. So what does he do? He runs away. And he's scared and he's overwhelmed and, and he feels like he can't do it. And he runs into Pumbaa and Timon. And Pumbaa and Timon, Hakuna Matata, they give him the, the courage. They give him the strength. They, they empower him. They motivate him. They tell him, like, you can do this, Simba. Go back to your village. Like, you can be the king. And so he ends up going back to the village and becomes king. And so we, as Rainbow, as organizations, as brands, want to position ourselves as the guide that brings the hero from a pain point to a solution. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome to me, Casa. Make yourself at home. Do your do. Welcome to my pad. This your lab. Go create your move. What's good, everybody? Welcome to 99 Miles Per Hour. It's me, your host, Percy Garner. And I'm excited today because we got someone who's going to teach me something. But before we get to our guest, I want to uh, talk about the sponsor who makes this show possible. And that is Peterman Plumbing and Heating. I've been only, you know, saying the plumbing part. Uh, but I want to share information about Peterman. So Peterman uh, Plumbing and Heating, they do a lot more than just plumbing. So they do remodeling and a lot of stuff. They have a lot of uh, technicians that go all over Northeast Ohio. And they've been doing it for over 45 years. So if you need any help, like, you know, I'm not the handiest man in my home. So if you're like me, then I'm sure you can uh, call them and get some assistance. So uh, if you want to reach out to them, the number might be on the screen, but we're going to go off my memory. It's 330-364-4497. And that's not because I've called them recently. I just some really good at remembering numbers. So, but without further ado, I want to get to our guest. So. I don't know why I'm out of breath. I'm nervous. You know, I got a professional on this call with me, but, uh, but no, this, uh, this person is someone I've known for a long time, I guess, if you want to, since I've been an adult, uh, we're technically family. And, uh, this person has grown into an individual that I admire and, uh, I've just, I'm excited. I wonder how we're on episode 50, but episode 49, it'll do. Uh, but this this woman is uh, well accomplished. She's a marketing genius. I mean, marketing consultant, brand strategist, and most important, a mother. And her name is Danny Kimball. How are you doing, Danny? I'm doing well. Thank you for that introduction, Percy. Happy oh, yeah. to be here. I put a lot of time in my introductions. <laughs> I like that. But uh, I'm very excited. Uh, obviously, you know. Marketing is something I'm trying to, well, we're all, let's be honest, we're all trying to, you know, I guess be efficient in our marketing strategies and do what's best. Um, but we're going to get into why, you know, some of us fail or I guess kind of forget about marketing and just keep doing the same old stuff that we've done for 40 years. So, uh, well, I guess we can give Peterman Plumbing a hand because they're doing stuff outside the box going through a podcast. So that's good. But uh, I wanted to catch up with you. I know I think we've seen each other a couple weeks ago, but uh, I want my audience to know a little bit about you and, uh, you know, why I chose to have you on the show uh, because you didn't ask to come on. You know, I had to <laughs> I was like, Danny, I want you on the show. So I'm glad you're here with us. But I just want to catch up with you a little bit um, and just ask a question that I've never asked anyone on the show. But what music are you listening to right now? What artist or song? You know, I've been listening to a lot of country music lately. Ooh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I'm dropping the kids off to school, I think that's the only time really that I'm like listening to country music. And I don't know why. I think it's just it. You don't you're not in a work mindset or you're not. When, when I was dancing, I was constantly like if I was listening to like pop music or something, I was I was constantly choreographing in my head and it felt like I was working. Uh, so okay. <laughs> now I listen to country music to just like not do anything. I got you. Got you. Well, and I, you got the cats out of the bag uh, about, yeah. you know, your career path and we'll get into that. But that's, that's interesting, you know, cause most people would say, 
you know, like for me, I'd always listen to music and I feel like I was just in autopilot mode. I'd forget where I was driving sometimes, but, um, now I listen to podcasts and I'm a little bit more intentional about what I'm, you know, putting into my mind and all that stuff. Uh, but I can't imagine listening to music and thinking you're working and trying to, you know, choreograph stuff to songs. That That's very interesting. You have to show me next time we have a, a dinner or something like that. <laughs> Some, <laughs> we'll, we'll put the moves together. Yes. Yes. We'll, you know, lock the outlaws out in one room, me, you and Shane, and we'll do our own thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but no uh so you know the thing you you know you've been going through lately uh besides you know about to bring another human into this world um mm-hmm. you've had a uh, a new i guess you've been in this marketing career for a long time working for a great prestigious uh commercial insurance company o- the o'neill group in wadsworth and and you, you've become you know like i said this marketing genius so uh, and now you're you know kind of transitioning into um you know, being a marketing consultant and working, uh, I guess for yourself, but without going into too many details, you know, how has it been, you know, kind of transforming, you know, I guess your mindset on how you attack, uh, your, your business. Right. Yeah. No, that's a great question. And I think something I'm, I'm trying to figure out every day right now, but yeah, I'm in the middle of this transition of working for a, a corporation, a business, uh, which I loved. I enjoyed O'Neill Insurance. Like you said, they're in Wadsworth. And I had great leadership and mentorship there that allowed me the creative freedom to really grow and, and learn and test in marketing. And that took me so far Um in, in just all aspects of marketing. And now with, as you mentioned, the, the human on the way, now I'm expecting my fourth child. And I, I reached a point where I, I needed to make a decision that I felt like created a little bit more balance for my family uh, and created more flexibility for my family so that I could be available to them, you know, throughout the day when they needed me. And so I decided to step down from my role there full time, although I'll still do consulting work with them and just take on some consulting marketing projects on the side and work on my own schedule and and be a little bit more present with my family. So that's where we're at right now. Wow. That's uh, I mean, that's a decision that, you know, was probably tough, but obviously you knew what you had to do uh, because we know what's most important. That's family. And uh, now that I'm thinking and we're talking about the O'Neill Group, uh, one thing I did kind of want to touch on is, uh, and maybe we can get into a little bit more later, uh, but sure. is, you know, you know, the thing that you kind of specialize there. And I don't know if you were the champion of it, but I know when I went in, you know, for the interview and was getting kind of, you know, a feel of what you guys were doing. The f- the only thing I really noticed, because I was only there for a couple hours, was, you know, the type of culture that you guys had in the office mm-hmm. And I loved it. You know, it was a, it was amazing. And I was fortunate to go to another company that had a similar culture thing. And and everybody who left, the, you know, the job, you know, may want to come back later. Like, man, you know, the grass is not greener. You know, there's the culture we have here is just magical and it makes you want to continue to work there. So uh, I know that probably made it a little bit harder for you to make your decision. But uh, just to talk a little bit about, the, you know, the culture you guys had at the O'Neill Group. Yeah, no, you're, you're spot on there. The culture was huge at O'Neill Insurance. It was the priority. It was the focus. And that stemmed from Patrick O'Neill, who's the president and CEO. And actually, his son, Pat O'Neill, is the president. His Patrick O'Neill is the CEO. But both of them really drive that culture and create this intentionality around uh, what, what we call a culture plan. And so it is the strategy. Uh, it is the center of the strategic plan for the business. And it's just making sure that our people at O'Neill Insurance are feeling fulfilled in the work that they do and feeling um, passionate about the work that they do and, and making sure that the people feel cared for and are respected. And so I always say, you know, it's it, you, you are working for a family business there. And though you're not related from a bloodline, standpoint you are you do feel like family and so that made that decision you know I cried for a week over making this decision even though I know it's right in my heart based on where my fam- my personal family's needs are but um, you just grow really big relationships there and it all comes from the culture and so how what I did with that the culture and that being the focus is I shifted that into 
the brand, the agency. And so the culture is the brand and the people are the brand. And, you know, when the culture is weak, the brand is weak. When the culture is strong, the brand is really strong. So we um, are constantly leveraging that angle when we're pushing out messaging in our story um, out into the marketplace. Uh, I like it. And that's what I remember. So obviously you've done a good job. So, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, I also, you know, obviously we talked about, uh, you know, your family and, you know, the tough decision. Um, I kind of want to see, you know, I, I like my plan wasn't to go into culture, but obviously that was what popped in my head. And that, that happens from time to time, but I wanted to, you know, try to uh, pick your brain about marketing. And before we dive deep into it, just what are some things that you see right now in the marketplace that are, are kind of new or just not that everyday business is, is taken advantage of that you think is a, is a new trend that might stick? Oh, Percy, there's so much, <laughs> as you know, just marketing continues to evolve and um, it changes by the day. And, you know, at one minute you could be focusing specifically on Facebook advertising and driving a ton of opportunities through Facebook ads. And then the iOS update through Apple changes everything and immediately your business could be shut down. So uh, if you were running and building your revenue based off of Facebook ads, which there are surprisingly, there are many businesses that focus solely there because the ad platform was so good, right? Yes. There was a time where I was, I was helping my mom with her ads for her restaurant just right at the start of this pandemic. And we were paying six cents to drive somebody to her website to order online. Six cents. Really? And that order could have, you know, for a family of, uh, f of four and maybe they're spending $60, but yeah. it cost us six cents to acquire them. So, wow. um, you know, Facebook advertising was was huge. But now if if you relied on that iOS retargeting, um, you know, it could have totally impacted. So I would say one thing that I, I would remain consistent on in this answer, even though as marketing continues to evolve, is like you do want to own your own platform of some sort. You want to own your own data. So I would start with like email marketing, even though that was the initial start of digital marketing is still very strong and still very effective. And you own the, the email addresses when they opt in to be a part of your newsletter or a part of your specials or something where they give you an email address, then you get to market to them and nobody's taking that away from you. <laughs> that yes. is your, that is the email address that you get to use to market to them. So I would highly recommend just, just stay while you can utilize the different social media platforms, staying on something that you own, whether it's your website or your email list. And that's one thing I focused on once I got to rainbow is like, we have everyone's address because everyone mails in a check, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, the, the up and coming generation, I don't know if they're going to be having they're going to be writing checks still so i don't know so that was sure. one thing i wanted to do is you know get email addresses but that's a big point i didn't even think about that you know with the the ios update coming out and how that i was thinking of it as a consumer like yay and then i'm like oh wait no <laughs> yeah. so it's uh it's yeah. it's you're you made a great point stuff like that could change the whole course of your business plan so um but mm -hmm. dang what yet yeah, i'm glad you brought that up that was good that was good but <laughs> <laughs> i want to you know dive a little bit deeper into uh you know no more, like learning more about you um and it, it would help me i still i know you obviously but you know just to get some some more details about you know your career path and for me it's kind of crazy it's similar to um for me i can kind of compare the two where I started in one spot and then went to another one and it ended up working out and being like this very, very, you know, life fulfilling journey that I've been on. So mm -hmm. you, on you, you talked about dancing. So, I mean, I guess just give us a little, you know, uh, a spiel about how you went from dancing to being, uh, this, uh, very successful marketing person. Oh, yeah, sure. I can share that. I know I opened it up early on and it's weird because you and I do know each other so well. And so <laughs> having these conversations is like, oh, well, you know this about my life. But yeah, um, yeah so I, I actually started dancing when I was three years old, but I 
uh, I really became serious about dance when I got into high school. And so I was part of this program. It allowed me to leave school around 1030. And I would train and, and rehearse and choreograph, you know, for the remainder of the day a little bit. Um, almost every day, Monday through Thursday and all day Saturday, I was just dancing. I was at the studio and I, I just loved it so much. So I went on and pursued my bachelor's degree in dance at the University of Akron. And uh, while I was there as part of a dance crew, now this was when like America's Best Dance Crew was cool on MTV, if you remember that. <laughs> yes. uh, and so we we like formed this group. It was led by twin boys, Brian and Scott Nicholson. And so we would spend our days at on campus, you know, training and doing our courses. And then we would spend the evenings. We rented this tiny college house off campus and we would go down into uh, a basement. We had these wall mirrors taped up across the cinder block walls of the basement. You know, those wall mirrors you can buy at like Target or something. Uh, yes. <laughs> we taped those up and we would we would rehearse and choreograph and, and train. And, and all night long, we would just constantly be working on telling a story through movement. And that was the choreography part of it. And we loved it. And there was probably 12 to 15 of us, but um, we'd be jammed in this basement while our peers may have been out, you know, at frat parties or things like <laughs> that's what we were doing was just dancing. And um, it was an amazing experience. And the twins who who were like the artistic directors of the group, they, they were incredibly visionary and they were always about creating an experience for the audience or telling a story through movement that really elicited some sort of connection and emotion with the audience. So it wasn't solely about entertainment, which was always fascinating to me, but came time for graduation and we, there's two paths you can take. You could go pursue your master's degree in dance, which is a safer route, right? Or you could go and uh, go to New York city and try and become a professional dancer and wait tables and audition and, and really try and make it. <laughs> and I took the safer route. I went off to Temple University in Philly to get my master's. And then the twins went off to New York City. Um, and today they are the creative directors for Ariana Grande's show. Wow. And so their whole vision of being this professional dancer and their relentless goal and dream of making it. And they're also their passion of telling a story through movement lives on through the work they're doing with Ariana Grande and building her brand and telling her story through movement and through the whole backdrop and scenery and everything like that is their job. So um, super cool. So it's like, OK, yeah. so they went on to be the creative directors of Ariana Grande and I land in marketing somehow, but <laughs> I'll, I'll bridge that gap. <laughs> Um, my final semester of grad school, though, I tore my I tore my MCL. I sustained a number of blood clots. I had to come home and, and finish my grad program from home. Uh, fortunately, Zach and I were together. We had been together for a couple years at that point. So uh, we were getting married that summer. So I decided to, to stay in the area. I got back into dance, back into the performing arts. And five years later, I, I blow my knee out again. Ooh. And... Uh, at that time, and, and I know you know injuries, too. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time, it was like, I remember just feeling so devastated because here my whole career had been dance. And, and while I was in Philly, I got to perform professionally while I was pursuing the master's degree. And it was so much fun. You could get on a mega bus. You'd be in New York City and, you know, a few minutes, it felt like. Um, so it was just a really cool experience. And so when that all ended, I... I was I was devastated by that, but I started looking for jobs on Indeed and I knew I needed to like fulfill that creative side of me, right? Without the physical demands of yeah. dance. And so I remember I'm like sitting on the couch, I'm in a cast from my hip to my ankle and I'm crying as I'm looking for jobs <laughs> and I find uh, a marketing coordinator position at the local insurance agency up the street. And so I said, well, whatever, let's apply. So I applied. I send in my application. It's filled with dance. Like there's no marketing background at all in the story, I guess. On their end was, uh, you know, they had interviewed a couple marketers. And then finally, Patrick said to the chief operating officer, he's like, oh, just just bring in the dancer. Like, what the heck? We might as well interview her. Um, so I, I went in and, you know, I remember doing research. I'm like, how am I going to get passionate about insurance and risk management and like, here I grew up in this arts background, this performing arts background, nonprofits, you're constantly advocating for something, right? And so 
I'm like, well, you know, you, you learn to treat every interview as an audition um, or every audition is like an opportunity or an at bat when in the dance world. And so interviewing was the same thing is like, OK, let's just use it as a practice round almost. And um, I was looking online. All their stuff was outdated. It felt archaic. It was very much insurancy, right? Yeah. And uh, I go in, though, and as you mentioned about the culture, I felt that same experience when I walked in the door. I felt that same thing. And so just this overwhelmingly warm welcome of the people and then sitting down with Patrick O'Neill and having a conversation with him. I think we broke every interview rule in the book at that point. I think we talked about family. We talked about kids. We talked about religion. Like everything came up. It was, it felt right though. It felt like authentic. It felt real to have conversations like that where we were just getting to know each other to see if this was a fit. And so in that moment though, I had thought about what, what their digital presence looked like at that time compared to like what the experience was when you go in there and I was like, wow, like this story was not being told, you know, this story of like this culture and these people and this amazing purpose that they have to protecting people was not being told in the marketplace if people were going online to look for them. And so they did offer me the job and I realized, you know, I could be the one to tell that story even though I wasn't through dance and movement and things that I was comfortable with. It's like, okay, how can I apply it from a marketing standpoint and uh, really tell the story? And so I took on the challenge. I always say the agency became my studio. The people at O'Neill Insurance became my dancers, even though they sometimes I made them dance. <laughs> and then I was back to being the choreographer. I was back to kind of morphing and telling that story just in a different way. And so that's, that was, that was the venture from dance into marketing. And I, I feel like I'm way much more in my element from a marketing standpoint uh, than, than I was in dance. So it was a yeah. blessing in disguise. Yeah. That's, that's an incredible story. And, uh, I'm glad that others, you know, get the chance to hear it. And for me, just like listening to that, it's just like, it's just like, wow, like that's so crazy. Just so you can go from, you know, obviously uh, it's, they're both creative, but obviously different, you know, types of creation. And for me, I've always not been that creative to me. You know, I'm like, I can't, I've never been an artist drawing wise, you know, um, and stuff like that. So when I'm trying to look at graphic design that's why i got josh i'm like hey josh you do this um, <laughs> but i'm learning like you you can you know uh it's a different outlet and you can find out ways to do that you know i dabbled in music but we're never going to listen to any of those songs that i've made um <laughs> i think they're gone <laughs> everywhere i've deleted them i made sure they're recycled bin cleared and everything <laughs> but um it's just it's it's crazy what you find out about yourself when you you know take a chance and you know who knows if you never would have said yeah let's try this marketing coordinator position so um i think it's pretty cool but you know the main thing in which kind of gets out of my vision and sometimes and i'm i'm sure we're all you know uh guilty of it is family and you know i think it's pretty important and i told you about me and um chris's conversation that we just recently had and how i feel so much better and i wish we would have had it for like years ago but um, just tell me a little bit about, you know, cause obviously you're married to my wife's brother. Uh, so just tell me about like marriage and family and, you know, how that kind of, you know, doctored into, you know, how you grew at O'Neill and, and what you're looking to do, I guess, after. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, y marriage is, is such a beautiful thing and, and there's so many beautiful moments that come along with it along with along with challenges too right and so i have found you know the longer that zach and i are together the more we grow closer and uh almost more aligned with like our purpose my job is to get him to heaven solely and his job is to get me to heaven solely and there's a lot of sacrificial love that happens in that process and when you throw kids into the mix and so us having three is is you know, you're shifting dynamics and you're constantly trying to balance like that love you have for each other and that strong um, connection to your faith and then raising uh, three children to also have a strong faith and to, you know, live a just life and, and everything. So it, it's just a lot that we, you know, manage in the day to day. And 
it's easy to, I think, it, the more I realize how, how easy it is to get sucked into the day to day and forget about that bigger purpose and, and mission that we're on in life. And so we have we have really focused on being more intentional. And I think about everything that I do in my role um, prior to this as chief marketing officer at O'Neill and and now currently in the consulting role, I'm like incredibly intentional about the work that I do. And intentional is the word that I want to focus on here because I'm not always that intentional in my day-to-day life with my family, right? And sometimes it feels like you just go through the motions of like, okay, get your bath. Okay, it's time for dinner. Okay, we're going to baseball. Okay, you know, and it's just like, it, it becomes like, you're just moving through the motions instead of being like very purposeful about um, what you're trying to achieve as a family. And so we have been, you know, what's been helpful. And I, and I mentioned to this to you earlier is we've been doing these weekly meetings <laughs> every Sunday <laughs> where we kind of sit down and we go through, you know, like what's, what's ahead for the week. Like we prepare and we kind of focus on, all right, what are we looking for forward to this week? What's our what's our personal best from the week before? Um, what's our spiritual best from the week before? And we kind of just touch base with each other and make sure we we even have the kids watch a movie or go outside. But they know like that's that's our time that we need to be together for at least an hour and just kind of center ourselves. So um, I, I'd say quality time and intentionality around showing love to each other and focusing on that big pur- purpose and that big mission that we're on rather than uh, going through the day to day motions, which, you know, you get sucked into every, every day. Yeah. So listen to that, like, and it's hard for me not to, you know, compare everything to sports because that was my life. So <laughs> I, I look at that and that's just it's the same thing that people do. Like when you look at people who prepare for, you know, a sporting event or if you're in the Olympics, you do all four years of preparation. But then when you get into normal life or your real life with your family, you, you kind of just kind of throw all that to the side and you only do that stuff, the hard work and preparation for your your career or your job or your sport. And I think, you know, over the years, I've been kind of transforming my mind like, OK, I need to kind of take that all those, you know, ha- good habits I learned playing professional sports and apply it to my family. And I think it's paying off. And you guys obviously having, you know, it might be funny talking about like, hey, I have a weekly meeting with my husband. But uh, it's it's obviously, you know, paying dividends. And I think it's great, especially you said touching on, you know, the the best the things that happen that are good, because a lot of people don't like to, you know, look at those things. You only like to look at the negative things. And, you know, I don't know if Zach, because me and him watched f- film together playing football and Coach If only pointed out the, the negative things. So uh, it, it could be it's an easy habit for humans to point out the flaws. But I think it's very important that you do, you know, spend some time on the positive. So, you know, like, OK, you know, and it helps us with our mental health. So I think that was good. I'm yeah. glad you shared that. That was awesome. But <clears throat> and I guess you kind of just. You know, my next question, you just kind of answered it too with that <laughs> within that, which is good, is, which is good. And uh, yeah. I, I just want people to know how important marriage is to me. And um, I want to see the statistics change. And because to me, it's just it's different. You don't hear many people having the uh, the relationship that you have where you feel as you get, uh, you know, longer that you've been with Zach, the better the relationship mm-hmm. is. It's usually the other way around. And I, I want to, you know, you know, flip that around. And it's it's not easy, but, um, it's something that if you want to do it, you can accomplish it just like anything else in life. So, um, I think it's, I think it's pretty good, but now I want to get into the the marketing stuff so I can kind of (laughs) like, you know, take some mental notes, maybe watch this episode back and try to apply it to what I'm doing. But, (laughs) (laughs) um, I guess just, I want to hear like what you think the basics of, you know, marketing, whether it's brand improvement or, uh, you know, how to improve awareness of you. Cause rainbow connection, I feel like people know, but they don't know. And you people mm-hmm. like, I think Tiff said it on the last episode that you got to kind of keep reminding people. You can't just assume they know what's going on because they get their own stuff, uh, in their life going on or at their own job. So you got to keep reminding right. people. So, I mean, for, for you, what are the basics of, I guess, marketing one-on-one we'll call it. Yes. Well, and, and the basics don't change from the 1970s to where we are today. I think sometimes all of this digital media uh, comes into play and those are tools and those are tactics to drive marketing. But it really comes down to 
telling your story and your message. And that can be done across a variety of different tools. So while in the 70s and 80s, that message that you were telling to your target audience was through print ads that would show up in a magazine or a newspaper or a yellow pages, right? Um, and that, yellow well, pages? That, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that has changed dramatically. It is still about, to me, uh, content. So uh, if you look at Rainbow and you look at your vision and your purpose, uh, and, and you unite a community around that purpose and, and then tell a story and tell multiple stories that align to that purpose through content. So that could come across in today's age as a blog post or a social media post or a video uh, or, or a native video on social media with a caption that kind of re- recaps or outlines that story. Uh, I think that's where there's just huge opportunity. And People connect to stories. People connect to stories, not products and features and services. They connect to stories. Uh, And so not that you want to, I'd say, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? You don't want to exaggerate the story. But there's a lot of beautiful stories within Rainbow, I'm sure, right? And so... How can you pull those, whether they're case studies or testimonials or, or things that people you've worked with have have shared with you? How can you pull that into a story framework, which a good book for you would be Story Brand by Donald Miller. Story. He walks you through exactly how to put put a strong story into a framework for marketing and for your messaging. And it really comes down to how you're communicating that messaging out to the audience. Okay. All right. I'm definitely going to get that one then. Cool. I'll, I'll read that to Purse at night. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's well, awesome. actually, let me step back and, and share with you what his concept is. So um, let's let's take the movie Lion King, for example. So Donald Miller studied a ton of uh, film and theater scripts, and he said, hey, what, what movies pull the biggest audiences in, and why do they do that? And how can we apply that to a business perspective? And so let's use the movie Lion King. A lot of times brands position themselves as the main character, as the hero, right? And so uh, in Lion King, Simba would be the main character. And we, we as brands need to position ourselves as the guide and position our customers as the hero. Mm. So Simba is young, his father passes away, all of a sudden they want him to be king of the village, right? But Simba lacks the confidence, the security, the 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 courage to become king. So what does he do? He runs away and he's scared and he's overwhelmed and, and he feels like he can't do it. And he runs into Pumbaa and Timon. And Pumbaa and Timon, Hakuna Matata, they give him the the courage, they give him the strength, they they empower him, they motivate him, they tell him like, you can do this Simba, go back to your village, like you can be the king. And so he ends up going back to the village and becomes king. And so we as Rainbow, as organizations, as brands, want to position ourselves as the guide that brings the hero from a pain point to a solution, okay. from a problem to a solve. And so that's how you position your story story is you as the guide, not rainbow as the hero. That's I like that. I think people can picture me as, as, as Boomba, right? <laughs> 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 I like that analogy though. That is perfect. And that makes it easy. That's awesome. I like it. Yeah. What about you, Josh? You going to use that? Yeah. <laughs> and you said that that's, that's in that book. That's in that book. Yeah. Okay. All right. For sure. Awesome. We getting the good stuff. She's not even charging us. This is amazing. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're recording it. We can watch this back. Awesome. Well, um, and I guess we, we obviously we talked about um, digital marketing. You had mentioned it earlier. And I guess that's the, the new version, uh, but we're keeping the same principles. So I think that's anybody can use that. Like you're putting rainbow in there. Obviously you've done it with a, a Neil insurance and you're going to continue to do it with all the brands that you consult. And I think it's, I think it's pretty incredible. And then especially when you tie it all back with, you know, advertising and stuff like that, it's all, I know some people, and I know I initially looked at it as, ah, do I need to do this? But it's, <laughs> it's like, it's a necessity. And 
Uh, you know, sometimes we laugh at people's ads or different companies' ads, and they have all these great commercials and stuff. But you know, there's got to be a strategy behind it. And I was at a, a conference and just listening to this, this guy talk, I was just like, man, this is amazing. He got me all fired up and then not listening to you. And I'm like, ah, you know, I'm really, I'm ready to go. <laughs> so, um, but I, I just want to touch on a couple, you know, I guess common weaknesses you might see. Um, and I know you touched on a little bit with O'Neill, how it just seemed, you know, they weren't concentrating or they weren't telling the story of how great their culture was inside the building and what they shared with their customers. So if you weren't a customer, you didn't really experience that. So you had no reason to kind of, you know, reach out to O'Neill. But now uh, once you, you know, share your story, then it's a little bit different. And, and there's reason to go, OK, you know, when I need this, I go to this uh, to O'Neill. So what common weaknesses are you finding you know, with, you know, being a consultant with businesses and their marketing strategies or lack thereof? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good question. I, I think uh, that I'll call it the shiny object syndrome. <laughs> you know, there's there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's LinkedIn, there's Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, Clubhouse and podcasting and blogging and a website, all of these things. Right. And all of them can be important, but it really comes down to what I see a lot of organizations do is they try and try and be everywhere to every everything to everyone by placing themselves everywhere across all of those social media channels across everywhere online. But as a result, they're not narrow focused on driving really strong content to the right audience. And so when you're on Facebook, you're talking to a different audience than when you are on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you're on LinkedIn, for example, you tend to be around business executives or uh, just people in business in general. And when you go into the LinkedIn platform, you are more business focused and have that business sense and mindset. And so a typical Facebook post wouldn't do as well over on LinkedIn as it would you know, on Facebook, where it's more family focused, and it's more um, neighborhood relational, right? Mm -hmm. Friendships are there. So I think it really comes down to, uh, and this is where I think organizations could focus on is like, where is your audience, your target audience hanging out, and then focus on being on one, two or three channels where their your audience is at, you don't need to be on 15 different channels because you're only going to spread yourself too thin and the messaging isn't going to work, but focus on two or three um, and really narrow down on the messaging to that specific audience. I like it. That's, that should be very helpful. I mean, if you're thinking about it on TV, you know, no one's on every channel, like, <laughs> like come on now, you know, sports right. are on ESPN and well, music used to be on MTV, but we won't talk about MTV right now, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, I, I quickly wanted to just talk about, you know, what you see yourself in the future, because we've touched on a, a lot of stuff and I appreciate the time you've spent here. Uh, but before we wrap it up, I do want to see, uh, you know, how you look at, you know, how you're going to be involved with the community moving forward, um, your community personally uh, and locally uh, and maybe you know, internationally or nationally, because I know you've already spoke at, you know, some pretty, some pretty big conferences or, you know, stuff like that. So um, I guess, where do you see yourself career wise moving forward um, and just being involved in, you know, making the world a better place? Mm, love that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So right now, honestly, it feels like a, a little bit of a step back for me and I feel comfortable with that. I think it's for the right reasons of just uh, raising my three little ones, I will be home during the summer and taking them to the pool and think, you know, my kids have been in daycare since they were two months old. And so for not the past eight years, I have never had that opportunity of just being home. I've worked full time. Uh, so this is a big opportunity for me to really focus inside on my family. But then also I'm, I volunteer on the boards for two different human resources associations up here in Akron and Cleveland, um, mainly because I'm obsessed with the HR role and how it intersects and aligns with marketing. And I feel like there's a huge opportunity for employer branding. So that would be, you know, if you're looking to hire or attract talent into your organization, you want to have a strong employer brand and that can center around culture, but it's all comes down to the marketing and how you tell that story. So I, I'm helping serve those organizations as well. And then from a career goal standpoint, 
I kind of see myself maybe in the winter, you know, after I have the baby in the fall and take some time to, to just be home. I see myself in January, February, really growing the consulting and kind of focusing in that direction. Um, but things change and things come up. And so I'm just really trying to be open and, and see where God leads me uh, on this path. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of the mode I'm in as well. I know I just started a rainbow and uh, I'm learning so much. So I'm just trying to <laughs> keep it as much as I can and, you know, just write down everything that I learned and try to remember everything. But um, that's good, man. I just, I think it's pretty cool, you know, for, and I always say women, you know, should wear a cape and do all this stuff because that's just, it's just crazy what, what, what you have to do. And I always told you the story about when Krista got sick uh, after having Peyton and she was really out of commission and this, yeah. those three days, it was just a nightmare in our house. <laughs> I'm just like, how do you do all this? But, um, uh, but uh, yeah, let's end with the, some fast questions. I won't, it won't be a lot, but I just thought of some great questions like right off the cuff. So I'm excited. Okay. Hopefully I remember them. Okay. Josh, you got the timer? No, I'm joking. I always say, that. yeah, we don't put a timer on the thing. Um, <laughs> All right, we'll start off with a with an easy one. Favorite movie of all time? Uh, center Stage. Center Stage. I'm actually, I think I have that movie. I just bought this device that allows me, I had a terabyte of movies, like 700 movies on this hard drive, spanning from like 2017 to older, older movies. So I'm going to have to look on there. Was that a newer movie? No, okay. actually it came out, I think I was in high school, but it is very much a dance movie. <laughs> okay. I I, can, I like those. Did you like, um, uh, what's that movie? What's that movie? Uh, the Greatest Showman. Do you like that movie? Yes. Yeah. We love that movie. That's a good movie. That's a good movie. Um, that is good movie. crap. I forget that question. No. <laughs> um, it was so good too. I was so proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, yeah, the timer is now. So me, usually the guests is take forever. Like, oh, uh, what is this? Um, all right. So I just asked you a favorite movie. We're going to say, oh, here it is. If you were, okay, what song would be your walkout if you were, you know, about to get hype or if you were going to pitch for the Indians and you were running out to the mound, what song would you have wanted to hear? Uh, you know, we danced to the song at a wedding. And I forget whose wedding it was. Me, me and you did. both did? Yeah. Um, but it's Bruno Mars, 24 Carat. Oh, that is a great song. I wish we could play that right now. But I know. YouTube. That is definitely my <laughs> hype song. I love it. That's a great choice. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, man or woman, dead or alive, who would you want to go to dinner with or spend time with and kind of pick their brain from any time frame? Don't say Jesus. No, uh, sure. <laughs> this close. Uh, Saint Saint Zelly Marie. I've been obsessed with her story, and actually, will be naming my child after her. But uh, uh. she she raised like nine children, and she owned a her own lace making business in the eighteen hundreds. And she, of her nine children, two of them became saints. But they, her and her husband, were the first couple to become a saint so i i i'm just very fascinated by her story and uh yeah so that would be an interesting dinner conversation yes sure. it would be she only had nine kids she could no, i'm joking <laughs> <laughs> right oh uh, that's awesome um mm -hmm. well i got no more those are great answers i really love the uh the 24 carat now i'm gonna probably listen to that song on the way home <laughs> <laughs> but danny i appreciate having you here i know we went over the time i said but you gave some great content to us and to all my listeners mm -hmm. and uh i appreciate you sharing all your the experiences you've gotten over the years so thank you uh -huh. i appreciate having you here and go be a mom <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me percy i admire what you're doing i think this podcast is awesome and i also know you're just a great dad and a great uncle and a great husband and you have a beautiful family so i am grateful to be your sister-in-law and also to now be on your podcast with you <laughs> <laughs> well awesome i appreciate all the compliments and i forgot to do the thing i said i was going to do josh i always forget to do the like subscribe thing at the beginning because very mm -hmm. very few of our listeners get through an hour 
<laughs> unless it's just audio. But all right, Danny, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you guys tuning in. This is a great episode. Uh, I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Um, I appreciate you guys always coming through. I love doing this. We're not gonna stop, are we, John? Okay. Good. <laughs> all right. Have you, everyone have a good night. Peace. It feels like I'm a lover. Shout it, you my little mama. I got a crib out of water.